Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. In today's video, we are going to talk about the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system goes hand in hand with the immune system. Often, they get taught together. Sometimes, they are taught as two different systems. But the reality is, one relies on the work of the other. But what exactly is the lymphatic system? The lymphatic system is a series of vessels that travel one way up to the heart. Like veins, they also have valves to direct the flow of blood. What fluid, you ask? The lymphatic system has fluid running through it, which is called lymph. The lymphatic vessels pick up lymph from the tissues and bring it back to the heart to enter into the circulatory system's circulation. On its way back to the heart, the fluid also picks up several other things. In this video, we will take a closer look at the lymphatic system, its components, and what it does. The lymphatic system contains lymphatic capillaries, lymphatic vessels, and lymph nodes that work together to move a colorless, watery liquid back to the circulatory system. This system takes extra interstitial fluid, which is the fluid found between the tissues, and brings it back to the heart to enter into the blood circulation. When the circulatory system drops off nutrients to the tissues, it also pushes out fluid into the interstitial fluid. About 85% of this fluid goes back into the circulatory system through the capillaries, but about 15% of this fluid stays within the interstitial area. This is where the lymphatic system comes into play. It removes this extra fluid to prevent edema, which is swelling. Once this extra fluid enters into the lymphatic system, it is then considered lymph and moves along the lymphatic system back towards the heart. The main roles of the lymphatic system are to one, maintain fluid levels in the body. Without the lymphatic system collecting the extra fluid left in the tissues in that interstitial space, then swelling, or edema would occur. By removing this fluid and returning it to the bloodstream to be recirculated, the lymphatic system works to maintain the levels of fluid in the body. Two, the lymphatic system absorbs fat from the digestive tract. In the digestive tract, fats are not directly absorbed into the bloodstream. Instead, they are picked up by the lymphatic vessels and enter into the lymphatic fluid before they travel to the heart to enter into blood circulation, and then they travel around the body. Three, the lymphatic system protects the body against foreign invaders, bacteria or viruses that may enter into the body. Together with the immune system, the lymphatic system houses lymphocytes, which are white blood cells, and these cells monitor and fight off bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi that may enter your body. The fluid that travels in the lymphatic system back to the heart travels through at least one lymph node on its way back, which increases the chance that if something foreign did get into your body, it would get caught. And fourthly, the lymphatic system transports and removes waste products and abnormal cells that if they were left in the body could result in disease or disorders. Let's talk about the parts of the lymphatic system. First, we'll talk about lymph. Lymph, as previously mentioned, is also called lymphatic fluid. It is the fluid that travels through the lymphatic system. It is made of the extra fluid in the tissues or that interstitial fluid that gets left from the circulatory system. Plus, it gains some additions along the way, such as fats, proteins, nutrients, lymphocytes, which are white blood cells, damaged cells, and potential foreign invaders. Lymphatic vessels. Lymphatic vessels are the network of tubes that transport the lymph away from the tissues and back to the heart. They collect the lymph and transport it through lymph nodes and vessels on its way back towards the circulatory system. These vessels act very much like your veins do. They work under very low pressure and also have valves inside them to direct the one-way flow and prevent backflow. These vessels use the pumping mechanism of the heart and the squeezing of the muscles to help move fluid against gravity. Collecting ducts. 
Once the lymphatic vessels reach the heart, they empty into two collecting ducts, the right lymphatic duct and the left lymphatic duct, also known as the thoracic ducts. These ducts empty into the subclavian vein, which then returns the lymph to the bloodstream. Primary lymphatic organs consist of the bone marrow and the thymus. These are referred to as primary organs as these are where lymphocytes develop and mature. Bone marrow is found in the middle, spongy portion of the long bones. This is where red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets are produced. The thymus is found in the upper chest, just behind the breastbone. A special type of white blood cell matures in the thymus before it is released into the bloodstream. These special types of white blood cells are referred to as T lymphocytes or T cells. These cells are important in the cell-mediated response of the immune system. You can watch my video on adaptive immunity to learn more about these types of cells. Secondary lymphatic organs are sites where lymphocytes get activated. These include the lymph nodes and the spleen. Lymph nodes are bean-shaped organs that are responsible for monitoring and cleaning the lymph as it filters through them. As the lymph passes back through the lymphatic vessels to the heart, it passes at least one lymph node. These lymph nodes hold many lymphocytes, again, which are white blood cells, and other immune system cells that can fight off foreign invaders if found in the lymph. There are about 600 lymph nodes found throughout the body. There are areas like your armpit and groin where more lymph nodes are associated closer together. When the lymph node comes into contact with a foreign invader, such as a pathogen, bacteria, virus, etc., the cells become activated and also multiply. As a result, the lymph node swells. Think of the lymph nodes in your neck that become prominent when you are sick. You can actually feel them and feel them swelling. This is when they are activated. Lymph nodes are connected to other lymph nodes by lymphatic vessels. The spleen is the largest lymphatic organ. The spleen is located on your right side, just below your ribs and above your stomach. The spleen is responsible for filtering blood and also producing white blood cells that fight off disease. When an infection occurs, the spleen releases these cells into the bloodstream. Other lymphoid tissue. The majority of our digestive and respiratory system is lined with lymphatic tissue. Why? Because if an invader were to come into our body, these are the areas they are most likely to enter. These tissues play a very important role in the defense system of our body. We find these areas in the tonsils and adenoid. These lymphoid organs help to trap proteins from the food you eat and the air you breathe. I'm sure you've noticed those things in the back of your throat. They are your tonsils. You've probably also noticed that they get bigger when you aren't feeling well, especially with a sore throat. That is your immune system at work, fighting off what has entered into your body. Your adenoids are the same. They are just higher up behind the nose so you can't see them. Pyres patches are found in the tissue that lines your small intestines. Since this is the area where food is absorbed, it makes sense that these highly concentrated areas of lymphoid cells would be present to be able to monitor and destroy any bacteria that may enter into the intestines. Your appendix, which branches off your large intestine, also contains lymphocytes that destroy bacteria. All of these organs and vessels work together to continuously monitor the body, monitor the lymph, and fight off any invaders that may come into the body. The lymphatic system plays a large part with the immune system to make sure that your body um, stays healthy. If you want to learn more about the immune system itself, make sure to watch my videos on the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system to learn more about how these specific cells do their job. Thank you so much for watching my video on the lymphatic system. This was an overview to give you an idea of the different parts of the lymphatic system and how the lymphatic system is organized. I hope that this video helps you to better understand the lymphatic system and its role in the body. 
Also, you should realize how intertwined it is with the immune system. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so that you never miss out on a new video. If you have any questions, please make sure to put them in the comments below. Thank you.